let's talk about why insulin is good and bad. Hi, welcome to Keto with JT. I'm JT. I'm a certified keto and intermittent fasting coach, and this channel is all about a practical approach to living a ketogenic lifestyle. I want to talk to you about insulin, about why insulin is good. Insulin is a hormone created in pancreas. One of its primary functions is to unlock the cell to allow nutrients into the cell. One of its other functions is to trigger fat storage. In the presence of insulin, there is no fat burning. Now, critics of keto often uh, claim that keto advocates are misrepresenting or not understanding what insulin does. That the fact that in keto circles, we refer to it as the fat storage hormone, uh, draw some criticism. I saw a video not too long ago. There was a guy, he's a PhD, and he's talking about this exact topic, saying, oh, keto people, they call it the fat storage hormone. Well, that's not what it is. Its primary function is not to, I'm getting sarcastic, its primary function is not to store fat. Its primary function is to unlock the cell to allow in the nutrients. Well, later on, he did sort of contradict himself and say that and it it uh, triggers fat storage. It's not that we're saying its only function is to store fat, but it's one of its primary functions is, whether it's a secondary function or not, it does trigger fat storage. Okay, so we need insulin to live. But have you ever heard that phrase, even too much of a good thing can be bad? Let me illustrate this a little bit. Uh, let's talk about water. We need water to live, right? We know all, all forms of life that we know of have to have water in order to exist. In fact, when scientists are scanning the universe for other potentially habitable planets, one of the most important requirements is, and questions is, does that planet have any water? Because we know we need it to live, okay? So let's say you're out in the desert. I wanna illustrate this a little bit. I am in Arizona, I live in the desert, it gets hot. It gets really hot here in the summertime and I'm so glad the summer's coming to an end. If you, let's say you're out in the desert and it's 110, 115, maybe even 120, you're hot, it's you're tired and you're thirsty. What do you want? You want a big old giant glass of water, preferably with ice, right? Or maybe a nice refreshing glass of lemonade. And this is something you are thinking about, you're craving it, you need it. And you know that if you're out there for too long, if you don't have the water, you're not going to make it. Somebody comes along and says, hey, uh, are you thirsty? Yeah, yes, I'm thirsty. I've got some water for you. Come on over here. And you hurry out over there. Oh, man, I'm saved. And the person says, close your eyes, open your mouth. I'll give you the best water ever. So you do that. And this person proceeds to take a fire hose and unleashes massive amounts of water, jamming it down your throat. You know, you might be grateful at first, but that's not gonna be very pleasant, is it? So yes, we need water to live, but too much of it, and we drown. Let's take this a step further. We need water to live, but with excessive rainfall, floods come and water can be the most destructive force on the planet. Not to mention tsunamis overwhelming the, the coast and from the floods and tsunamis, uh, incredible amounts of destruction result and can even, uh, even loss of life. And, that, and, then, and that's not, obviously not a good thing. Well, insulin is very similar in that we have to have it to live but too much of it can be very destructive to our health and can lead to a potential loss of life. So insulin has been shown in studies to lead to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's. Uh, these, are, these are among the top 10 causes, leading causes of death. So having said that, um, it's important to remember that the, the, what's different is that with a flood or the tsunami, that's a big, big sort of rushing force of destructive power that you, that you see all at once. 
With insulin, it's not immediately visible. It sneaks up on you over time. High levels of insulin, a little bit at a time over time. High levels of insulin stretched out across months and years. And you don't really even know if you're not paying attention and you're not recognizing the subtle differences. Then the flood comes. Then the tsunami comes. When you're sitting in the doctor's office and they tell you, tell you oh, you've got heart disease. Oh, you've got, you've got diabetes. Then the flood of devastating emotion hits you. And you're wondering, what am I going to do now? So in summary, insulin is not inherently bad. Just like water is not inherently bad. We need both of them to live. We need insulin to live. But can too much of a good thing be a bad thing? I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it has maybe opened your mind a little bit to the topic, uh, topic of insulin. I hope you comment, hit the like button, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.